Hello out there and uh, welcome to this video about the flyweight exercises. So I plan on uh, just going through this one quickly. Most of the code is here so I, I won't go into too much detail then I will go through the one about the zodiacs here and I will go to this one here, the student program. These two here depend on how you implemented your assignment and um, that may look different from student to student. Your implementations are probably different. I don't expect you all copied from the same person so uh, it may not make sense to to go through these ones. So that's, that's the plan. So the first one here that's just uh, taking the example from the slides. It should be sort of a, a tutorial to, to get you started. So I have that here. That was my zodiac, second exercise. So I have this here. Um, we have the UML diagram, so I have the tree, fact, uh, tree interface here. You'll see that uh, it has the bark color, leaf color, has leaves, and some areas where it's commonly found. Then I have the implementing classes, oak, big, and spruce. I have the spruce. Apparently it doesn't do much. Bark color, dark brown, leaf color. Spruce, it has green needles, so it doesn't have leaves, and then commonly found in areas. I don't know, I should probably go on Wikipedia to uh, to look this up. I'll just say this is um, Norway. And Canada, doesn't matter. And I should probably do the same with the Oak, I actually have done the same with the oak, also brown color, light green, it has leaves, it's found in Europe, North America, Asia, and I have a beak, which doesn't have any values, and it's not really interesting for this exercise, whether this returns null or whatever, so I'm just going to leave this one. So, that was the uh, interface and the three implementing classes, you'll notice that these data or information here are things that are common for every oak tree. All oak trees has the same information here. If I have a specific oak tree with a specific age or GPS coordinate or something like that, then that specific oak tree would not be shareable, the object for that one, but it might have some shareable information also, besides the uh, unshareable data. So, I have this part. I have my tree factory. Let's take a look at that one. Tree factory. My tree factory has a um, private, instead of package protected, map of some kind. I'm using the hash map. You could have a map and we could probably use something else. Let's just see, because I'm curious. I have a map. That's a hash table, abstract map, linked hash map, navigable, sorted, tree map, all kinds of stuff. So I'll just go with the hash map. I'm used to that one. It doesn't really matter. The functionality they provide are all the same. It's just implemented in different ways. So I have my map to hold the trees, and for each tree there is a name. I have the public static get method, which will return an object of type tree, the interface. Uh, first we will attempt to get the tree by type here. If I'm asking for a tree of type oak, for example, then I will get the existing oak tree. If there is no existing oak tree, then the tree here will be null, and so I need to construct an oak tree. And my tree factory needs to know how to do that. So look at the case here, oak, which means I should spell this with a lower case O. Right? It is case sensitive. 
I create a new tree of type oak. I put that in, so with the tree type argument here, and my tree object, this one, the one I just created, and then it is stored uh, for later use, and then we return it down here to whoever needs this oak tree. So this is my factory. The same setup for all flywood factories. You have the static uh, map or list or whatever, some other type of collection. The map is just easy because we need to check if something already exists and the map is good uh, doing that. And then the tree factory needs to know how to construct the objects. Okay, and then finally I have my forest, the class that uses the trees and the tree factory. Forest, here we have the forest. My forest contains a list of trees and in the constructor I tell how many of each type of tree I want. I instantiate the array list. Then I loop through, I create oak number of tree. We maybe should call this here num. I want to recall num. Oop. I want to rename code occurrences num of oak. There we go. I will create this many number of oak trees. I get it from the tree, tree factory here, I get an oak, I add it to my list of trees. So whenever I call this method here, I get an oak tree, and if I call it more than once, I'm actually just getting a new reference to the, well, I get I get the same reference to the same oak tree. So I just have the, the same oak tree multiple times, which is, which is the purpose of the flyweight. We do the same thing for the big and spruce trees. And I have a little test down here to, to check that they're both the same. And I can run my forest. It's a tiny forest, I can see. Maybe it's just one of those small forests in the middle of a golf course with uh, something like 14 trees. Let's just run and see what happens. I should see that these two here print out true because I actually get the same oak tree uh, twice. And we're just compiling an output director didn't respond. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll cut this out in the editing. Here we go. Compilation successful. Something looks strange. There we go. I get true both times. So the true the two oak trees I have they are equal to each other. When I do the double equal sign, I'm comparing by memory location. If it's object, when we do the equals, we compare using the equals method. And by default, it's also using the memory location. So it is actually the same physical object in memory. So all is as expected. So that's the first exercise. Let us move on to the Next one, Zodiac. I can already now see I will be doing part of it and not all of it. There is some repetition that doesn't really give any value. So let's see. I have the setup here. I have the Zodiac. I have the Zodiac factory and I have the person. And there can be many persons and they can have the same uh, Zodiac. If you are born within the same interval, you'll get the same Zodiac. So, I'm fairly certain that uh, two students in the same class, they will have the same uh, Zodiac. Well, there are 12 Zodiacs and usually 12, 30, 30 students in a class, so uh, fairly certain is maybe understating it a bit. So let's take a look. I have already implemented the Zodiac uh, class. Here we have it. I have a Zodiac class. It has a name, and it has a start date and end date. And it might make sense to use an actual date class, 
but uh, to make it slightly easier, so I don't want to fiddle around with the calendars and dates and all that kind of stuff, I just use a string, and and I'm totally fine with that. I have get name, I have get an inter interval, which just creates the interval here, and then I have a string which prints out the name and the interval. So that is the zodiac exercise uh, zodiac class. I will create a zodiac factory. And in here we need a private static map of the string and zodiac. And I need to import it. Zodiacs. There we go. And it's equal to a new hash map. We'll use the hash map. Okay. I need a public static get so diac and it returns a zodiac by string zodiac name and we will do the same thing as I did in the tree factory I will first look up the zodiac so we say I'll just return null down here because the red underlining stuff annoys me. So, zodiac set is equal to zodiacs get by zodiac name. Okay, and maybe it already exists and I can just return that. Maybe it does not resist, exist and I need to Check for that. If set equals null, then we need to create it. So we could do the switch. It seems to the easiest. Zodiac name. And I say case. Um, I don't even remember where do we start. I'll look it up here. Assign Aries. Uh, Aries. Case Aries. Set equals new zodiac with the name of Aries and a start date and an end date. And let me look that up. Start date March 21st, end date April 19th, April 19th. Come on. 19th. Yep. Now why is it not always from the 20th to the 19th and then the 20th to 19th again? Why does it vary like this? Strange stuff. We'll do another one. Case um, next. What's after the Aries? We have Taos, new Taurus, this is probably from April 20, 20, 20th, 20th, and until May 20th. Yep, and let's do a third one. I'm sure you can see the pattern now. We'll just do the Gemini. And here we have a Gemini. And that's probably from May 20th until June. June, June, June 20. May 21st. 21th. 21st, June 20th. Okay, right. Obviously, I should have the other zodiac creation down here. Right. Well, that seems uh, less interesting. So, I have the factory. I have the zodiac. I don't need the tree factory. I'll close that. I have the two here, and I will create a person. And I have my person class. 
Java, Persian. And my person has a zodiac, private zodiac, zodiac, and private name, a string name. And let him see him to be it. We have a constructor. We have a constructor. We have that was not what I wanted. I don't want string zodiac name and I'll get back to that. I need a getter for the two and a oops. What did I open here? Two string method, and we will just return something name plus zodiac. And then up here, I don't want the I want the to use the zodiac factory, zodiac factory, and I want to get zodiac by zodiac name. There we go. Okay, um, that should be all. Maybe I'll just test so Jack. And we want to create a person P1, new person. It takes a zodiac name, Aries. And tools, and we create a person two, and he has a Taos, other tools, draw trussel, and let's just print them out P1, P2, and we run it, and we see what happens. And I print out tools. Aries. Okay, I misspelled something in here. Aries. Doesn't matter. And that's a range. March until, and that's probably okay. Right. So this seems to to work. I should be reusing existing zodiacs, which I am currently not. Because I also need to do this here. Zodiacs put zodiac name and set. Okay, so now I store it for later use. That was very embarrassing. Good thing we caught that. Okay, that's probably it. So let us uh, switch to the student program thing. I will create a new exercise package here. Exercise, well, it's not really exercise three, but that's okay. Um, third exercise, I guess. We'll do this one. Implement the flyweight design pattern as shown in the diagram below. An example of yada yada. Okay, so I need a an abstract class of education. You see, I start with this one because it's not relying on anything, it's not depending on anything. All errors points towards it, so I can create this one first without having any problems in my program. And that's why we start. Java Education, and it is abstract, and I need a private string code. I need a private string title I need to zoom a little and we have a constructor for both of them and I have a 
get off both of them. And I have a to string method, and we say I don't know tile plus code. Okay, let us then create the program school classes. I'll do the school first, new school, extends education. I need a matching super constructor, constructor matching the super. That's probably okay. I need a type. private string type I need a constructor that also takes a string type and we say this type was type then I need a get school type I need a two string mm, all right to string and we will return super to string plus type type that's probably okay that should be it for the school I need a program it has a private string head of program as a constructor oh I need this one here extends education I need to create a constructor and it also takes a string head of program we say this head of program equals head of program and I need a get head of program and we need a to string method we'll say type head head of program Okay, so now I have this part. Right. We'll do the factory. Channel class. Education factory. We need a private static hash map. And it is of... Huh. Should have been here. Obviously, I forgot that. Uh, string and education. It's new hash map. We need a public static education get education string name. Okay, I do the usual thing here. We have an education at new. No, I want to get it from here. Name. It might be null. In case it's not, we just return it. If it is null, I know I need to create a new one. So I do my switch. We switch on the name. We say case. ICT it equals new program and this one takes a code that could be ICT ICT takes title uh, ICT engineering we have actually changed our name to 
software technology te engineering, I think, something like that. And I hit a program and Tom, that's a long time ago. We'll do an she's the head of program at the current time when doing this video. We will have another case. Uh, let's say HGS it equals new school. It takes a HJS. It takes a title, Horsens Junior School. Junior School. And a type, it is of type elementary school. Elementary School. Okay, and this time I forgot to break and break. And after the switch, down here we will say educations put name comma ed to store it for later use. Okay, and what happened? Here we go. That's it for my factory. I can then create students. I will have student class, student class, student. My student, he takes, he has the name. He also has an education. Ah, education map. That's why it's not noted here. It's over here, right? And I also have the private field variable of called name of type string and we have one of education of type ed education so I just misread my uh, UML diagram um, let's see private string name private education education I need a constructor string String education name, and we say education is equal to we get it from the factory education factory get education education name. Yes, uh, there is also the usual method about get name and uh, have one about it get education as to string, and uh, we'll just leave these. I need the to string. Override to string, we will return name plus education, 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 right? That's probably good. And then we will create a test education, whatever. We create a student. This one student. It takes a name. Tolls. ICT. Maybe I should call this argument education code. I'll do that next time. We create another student. There's two. Other tools, ICT, HJS, we print out this one, this two, we run it, just to check that this actually prints out something meaningful. Fantastic. I could do this test here, just to be curious. I could say I want a getter, go away getter for the education because then I could say I want another student three third holes of ICT and then we say we print out S1 get education S3 get education and obviously 
if my read usage works, then we should print out true because I'm using the same object and I get true. So I think that concludes this exercise. There's nothing more to do in it. And I'm going to stop the video here. Thanks for watching.